Guys, this is Mubeen. We are talking about pulmonology. The lecture now is the Haldane effect. The definition of Haldane effect is simple. It is the favoring of carbon dioxide unloading or loading by the change in pressure of oxygen. What does that mean? What that means is this. Oxygen pressure changes help load or unload carbon dioxide. What does, how is that practical for us? In the lungs, oxygen pressure is high, so it helps unload the carbon dioxide to be released. In the tissues, oxygen pressure is low, that helps loading of the carbon dioxide to be picked up. So, that is called the Haldane effect. It is a reverse of the Bohr effect. Let us look at how does this happen. So, let us say here is a, here is an alveolus, this is lungs. So, this is an alveolus. Let us say that we have, this is a blood vessel. This blood vessel is going to take, this is a tissue, tissue is making carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide is coming out. What is happening? We know that the carbon dioxide comes in and it loads onto the, some of this is in dissolved form, right. Other is attached to the hemoglobin and then majority of the carbon dioxide becomes the HCO3 and is moving in the bicarb form to the lungs. We know these, we have done a separate lecture on it, so I do not want to spend too much time on this. The point is carbon dioxide is going to come from here to here. Now, when it comes here, the Haldane effect is this way. Let us look at hemoglobin. This is a hemoglobin molecule. Of course, the effect is pertinent to the hemoglobin. So, this is a hemoglobin molecule and this molecule has carbon dioxide attached to it. How can we favor this carbon dioxide to be dissociated? So, here is the mechanism. When oxygen comes in, when oxygen comes in, because oxygen pressure is very high over here, 100 millimeter of mercury, oxygen here was 40 PO2 in the venous blood was 40. So, there is a 60 millimeter of mercury gap. With that gap, oxygen comes in. When oxygen comes in, it loads onto the hemoglobin, right. Now, when the oxygen loads on the hemoglobin, what happens is there is a conformational change in hemoglobin. Hemoglobin becomes acidic and it releases hydrogen ion. This hydrogen ion then favors, because the acidity has become reduced, it favors the release of carbon dioxide. So, that is one. How does that happen? Remember, hydrogen would combine with HCO3 that would give carbon dioxide plus water, this carbon dioxide will be going out. So, one proton release has caused a carbon dioxide to be removed. When the carbon dioxide is removed, of course, the pressure reduces further and that causes the carbon dioxide to be removed from the hemoglobin as well. This is the Haldane effect. This is the Haldane effect. Now, how much and how important is this effect? Let us look at that. Let us say that this is 50 volume percent of carbon dioxide. This is 50 here. So, this y axis is representing the percent, volume percent of carbon dioxide in the blood and this is the PO2, sorry, let us make it PCO2. So, we know that in the tissue PCO2 is 45 millimeter of mercury. And what is the oxygen level? So, let us say oxygen level is usually PO2 is about 40 millimeter of mercury, right. So, that is this, this situation, the tissue. In the tissue, PO2 is 40, PCO2 is about 45 to 47, let us use 45. 
and that causes oxygen about 52 volume percent of oxygens to be loaded, 52 volume percent of oxygen to become loaded. Now, when this, this RBC reaches the lungs, the pressure of the PCO2 in the lungs is how much? Is 40. Let us say the oxygen pressure does not change. Assume that there is no oxygen coming in, oxygen stays 40. Then what happens is that at 4, at 40 millimeter PCO2 and 40 oxygen, it should intersect here, this one. So, let us make it like this. So, what happens is that carbon dioxide that would dissociate is 2 volume percent dissociation. How do we read this graph? We say it this way, at 45 that is tissue and PO2 of 40, the, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide loading is 52 volume percent. When we reach the lungs, the carbon dioxide pressure reduces because it is being exited. Let us say oxygen pressure does not reduce, then the total reduction in carbon dioxide, total removal of carbon dioxide is 50 volume percent. So, 2 volume percent reduction, 2 volume percent reduction. However, if what is the actual pressure here of oxygen? 100. In the presence of 100 pressure, actually what removes is 48. Actually, the carbon dioxide that is reduced, meaning exited, is actually the left is 48 volume percent. So, that means 4 total volume percent, 4 volume percent have been removed. So, 2 were going to be removed even if the oxygen pressure stayed the same. 2 extra got removed because oxygen pressure is higher. So, doubled, increased oxygen pressure doubled the unloading of carbon dioxide. Similarly, reduced oxygen pressure doubles the loading of carbon dioxide. So, this is one gas helping the other one. Remember in the Bohr effect, increased concentration of carbon dioxide favors the unloading of oxygen in the tissues. Here, increased concentration of oxygen is favoring the unloading of carbon dioxide in the lungs and how much unloading doubles. So, that is the effect, this effect is called Haldane effect. Thank you very much.